Hi, my name is Larry Jordan, and welcome to this Power Up webinar looking at the integration of Motion 5 with Final Cut Pro 10. Motion 5 provides a new interface and a lot of new controls and really tight integration with Final Cut, which is what we want to cover today. Oh, by the way, we have a new subscription service. All of our online video tutorials and webinars are now available via a subscription. This is a great way to access all our online training. For one low monthly price, you get streaming access anywhere, anytime via the internet to our webinars and our tutorials. To learn more, visit LarryJordan.biz slash subscriptions. What I want to cover today is to show you how to use the new Motion 5 interface. If you're new to Motion, there's a lot to learn. If you're experienced with Motion 4, a lot of stuff has changed. Then, I'm going to give you some specific examples how we can create, modify, and save a simple effect in Motion 5. Create a new generator for use in Final Cut Pro 10. Create a new transition for use in Final Cut 10. Create a new mask effect also for use in Final Cut 10. And show you how to create a picture-in-picture -picture effect with a drop shadow. This webinar looks at the Motion 5 interface and how to integrate it with Final Cut Pro 10. If you need help getting started with Motion 4, we have a whole series of Motion 4 webinars, which is available in our store, larryjordan.biz slash store. Look in the Webinars Motion category. When you first start Motion, the Project Browser appears. This allows you to create a Motion Project, a Final Cut Effect, a Final Cut Generator, Final Cut Transition, or Final Cut Title. In the top right corner, you specify what video format you want to work with. The default setting is Broadcast High Definition 720p. This is also where you specify the duration. By default, the duration is 10 seconds. For this first exercise, I've changed it to NTSC DV just because it fits on my screen better and changed the duration to 5 seconds because my goal is not to create something lengthy, but instead to show you how the software works. As confirmation, this shows you what your project type and image resolution are. By the way, when you're working in motion, you're always working in an uncompressed color space and uncompressed video format. Everything is as high a quality as possible. What the preset does is it controls the pixel aspect ratio and it determines what the format is that you're going to export when you save the motion project or send it over to Final Cut. In either case, everything that we work with inside motion initially is all at the highest possible quality. Once you've decided what you want to do, you have two choices. If these defaults are always the ones you want to use, you just simply need to double-click on one of these five icons, or select the icon you want and click Open. This is the default Motion 5 interface. For those of you that are used to Motion 4, there are more screens visible with the initial interface than there were with Motion 4. But the windows are essentially the same. This is the utility window where we're able to select files from either the operating system or the library of, of objects that are shipped with motion and the inspector, which is where we make changes. We're going to be spending a lot of time today in both the library and the inspector. This is the layers panel that determines the stacking order, foreground and background of your images. For me, it's incredibly important. We'll be using it a lot. Below it is the timeline editor or the keyframe editor. For people that insist on editing keyframes, this is really just helpful, I'm sure, and its mother likes it. But frankly, if you press the F6 key, the F6 key will make that window disappear, and that's exactly what I want to do in this particular case. The far right window is called the canvas. This is where we view our projects. To make the layers panel appear or disappear is F5. F5 toggles it on and off. You could also click one of the buttons down below, but I've never learned the buttons. I just pressed the F5 key. The timeline editor is F6. A floating palette called the HUD, or you can see it right here, the HUD is a shorthand way of making changes to our clips. Many adjustments can be made in the HUD without going to the inspector. That's the F7 key. So F5 for layers, F6 for timeline editor, F7 for the HUD toggles it on and off. And F8 goes to a full screen display so you can see what your canvas looks like either with all of the screens available or just to see the single screen. In this particular case, we'll turn off everything that we don't need Unlike Final Cut, which has multiple tracks for audio and multiple tracks for video all visible at the same time, Motion has one track available. It's called the Mini Timeline. The Mini Timeline shows the timing of whatever clip we have selected in the Layers pane. 
And most of the time we don't need to see more than one track at a time because we're just making changes to a single track. We also have this new darker screen that is uh, consistent with the Final Cut 10 interface. In the top right corner are where we're able to view things. This allows us to set the scale, notice the percentage, set the scale, 25% size or 100% size. This is exactly the same concept as scaling inside Final Cut 7 or 10. We have a view menu which allows us to turn safe zones on and off and other things. We'll turn off animation path because that doesn't need to be on for what we're doing. And beside it, <laughs> it confused me at the earlier presentation. But I will keep safe zones on. The keyboard shortcut, by the way, is apostrophe. You can toggle it on and off by typing apostrophe. Action safe is the outer rectangle. Title safe is the inner rectangle. The rest of these settings for right now are perfectly okay. We don't need to adjust them. By the way, if your canvas ever goes black and white, go up to the color menu and make sure the top choice is set to color.